Okay, so thank you very much, Fernando and Steve, um, for the introduction. So as mentioned, my name is Amanda Hammond. I'm one of the product managers for molecular imaging, and that encompasses the Biograph um, Vision Quadra. So I'm delighted today to share a little bit about this exciting system with you. Okay, so where did the Vision Quadra come from? Well, on the left-hand side of the screen here, you'll see um, our system called the Biograph Vision. And the Biograph Vision is a standard axial field of view PET CT system that is, is quite popular in the, uh, the standard clinical world and really has some very nice features in terms of um, image quality and throughput capability for that standard field of view world. And really what we did when we came up with the Quadra was take that, that foundation of technology and add to it to, to give us that long axial field of view and do all of those um, wonderful whole body imaging functionality that Steve has just mentioned. I've got some more examples of some of that in a little while. So the long axial field of view obviously means that we can cover more of the patient in a single view. Um, and that just opens up a whole world of different possibilities. So when we're stepping through um, this presentation, I just want to talk through it in terms of these four different points here, um, noticed by these flags coming down. So the first one I really want to talk about is the design of the um, detectors in the crystals and really looking at the crystal elements themselves. Um, then looking at the field of view size, the time of flight performance, and what those two things do to, to help with the effective sensitivity on the system and what that can bring um, in terms of both clinical and research capability. So first of all, looking at the crystals. So I really like to um, look at this in terms of both spatial resolution and lesion detectability. Um, so basically from a fundamental detector design, the, the crystal, getting the crystal elements the right size and um, working nicely together with the rest of the detector performance is really key. So our crystals are three by three millimetres and 20 millimetres deep. When we put them into the, um, the detector module, they're in a five by five milli block and that's a midi block and that's associated with the SIPMs um, at 100% ratio. What this crystal element size does for us is really gives us this fantastic spatial resolution. So here we're talking about it in terms of a volumetric resolution, and that's based on your normal NEMA spatial resolution, but looked at in all three planes at once. So it gives you an idea of what you'll see as a volume. Um, and comparing that back to sort of um, uh, SIP, other SIPM or PMT-based systems, we're looking at a, a really big um, uh, um, difference between the volumetric resolution of the different systems out there. So what that does in terms of um, your contrast recovery and, and detectability then of your um, smaller lesions as you move through is really in, enhances that. So we can see here a NEMA image quality phantom and you'll see this a couple of times during this presentation. And um, basically what this does is has different size spheres in the phantom the spheres are filled with um, four times the, um, the, the activity as the background. So you're looking at how well they pop out of the, um, the background of the phantom. And you can see with a four millimeter crystal, you can see the um, eight millimeter sphere fine, but the, four, uh, the five millimeter sphere is basically very, very hard to see. Um, when you're looking at the 3.2 millimeter crystal, then um, you're seeing that five millimeter sphere starting to come through. So the contrast and, and the um, detectability is coming through there as well. In terms of clinical performance, what that um, equates to is being able to see finer detail. So just an image here of a, um, of a brain um, acquired, and this is acquired, I must say, just as a standard whole body um, in this particular instance and reconstructed as such. So when we would throw different reconstructions at it more specific to, to brain work, we would tend to see finer detail as well. Um, the next point I wanted to move on to was the probably the most obvious advantage of the system compared to standard axial field of view systems, and that's having that 106 centimetres to play with. So when we're talking about the system itself and its design, um, this is the um, obviously where the patient sits or lays down. This is the CT component, and this is where the PET axial field of view is. So I guess from a looking at a side-on perspective of this system compared to other systems, standard axial field of view systems in the market, then they would probably finish about here. So you've got this extra depth of, um, of system there, which is where the crystals are hiding. 
Interestingly, though, the um, being able to cite it in the same room is a huge advantage. So even though we've got that extra axial field of view there, we can still put it in the same size scan room um, as an existing um, normal axial field of view system. So 106 centimetres, it seems like a bit of an odd number for an axial field of view. Why did we come up with that? And there's a couple of different reasons and I'll step through them now. Um, the first one is when we're looking at um, imaging patients and even imaging them dynamically and multi-organ coverage, we tend to be looking at um, the organs sort of within the vertex to, to thigh range. And so within this area, if we look at um, a range of different patient sizes here from 200 centimetres down to 161, we can see that 106 centimetres nicely covers from vertex to thigh on all of those different size patients. And that's important because in that area, we've obviously got brain, heart, lungs, pancreas, um, you know, liver, um, prostate, all of the different areas of interest that we might want to dynamically see um, what's going on in the body. Okay, so on the next slide, I've got a couple of um, AVIs as well, just having a look at different frame rates. Um, possible with the system. So on the left hand side, you've got a two second um, per frame AVI. And then on the right hand side there, we've got a 0.1 second per frame AVI. And you can see once you get down to that, it's obviously a, a lot of data to play with, but um, you can start getting in some more functional information in terms of um, respiratory motion and cardiac motion as well. Okay, and um, just going back to the um, axial field of view of the system, this is a nice little graph looking at the sensitivity of the system or systems at um, different axial field of views and really comes back to the decision why we decided a metre or just over a metre was a good, good point for, um, for the, the system. Um, so you can see here when you're looking at about um, the, the sensitivity gain, as you increase the axial field of view, you get your most increase um, up to about this one metre range, and then you start to plateau a little bit. So I guess your rate of return for the additional crystals starts diminishing as you go on beyond that one metre range. There's also some different factors to take into account. Um, one obviously being site planning. If you've got a, a longer system and that's much heavier, then um, planning it in a room becomes a bit more problematic. But also as you increase your, your angles of response, it starts impacting different things in your image as well. Now, what about the legs? Well, of course, we're not going to forget about the legs. Um, we've got a couple of different areas um, or ways to um, consider imaging the legs. And for standard, um, I guess, uh, what we would call static imaging, we've got um, flow motion, which is coming, which is just one solution for imaging legs in a standard clinical range. Um, and so what flow motion is, we have this on our standard biograph vision systems, and it's really a way of... Um, tailoring the, the protocol or the scan protocol to meet your patient or your subject. So not only on based on their clinical indication, and here that's indicated by having different scan range aspects here of high resolution, normal speed, fast speed, or potentially gating applications in the middle there, but also where does your patient sit in terms of um, uh, their, their body habitus? you can actually plan the, the scan range based on, on them and how they're appearing in the CT topogram. Uh, moving on from that, one of the other aspects that's coming for, uh, and is an exciting thing for dynamic imaging, um, is this flow motion multiparametric PET suite. So flow motion um, multiparametric PET was um, initially designed for um, for PAT-like modelling or automated PAT-like imaging, um, we use an, an image-based arterial input function. As Steve said, it's really nice not having to do that invasive side of the procedure and being able to do that off an image-based thing. So this is a nice automatic method, method of doing that. But you can see here that green line bobbing up and down in the image there is indicating the bi-directional table motion um, of continuous imaging. And obviously, if you were looking at that with a quadro, the green band would be much larger there, but it's opening up the realms of possibility for different dynamic passes. So 
So the next area I want to speak about was time of flight performance um, and just move straight on into that. So time of flight is one of those um, areas that's really become a standard of care part of PET imaging these days. And that's due to the noise reduction benefits and therefore the improvement in image contrast. So um, here again, we've got the NEMA image quality phantom. Um, and on the left-hand side, you've got an, an image without time of flight um, being uh, applied to the image. And you can see there, it's actually quite noisy and it's quite hard to depict some of these, these um, spheres coming through here. Moving on then to an image at 540 picosecond um, timing resolution. And that sort of um, is typical of your PMT based standard field of view systems. Um, and you can see that the noise has reduced in the image and you're, you're getting more clarity there of those spheres. Then when we look into the vision and quadra range, you're sitting at around this point here. So you can see some nice clarity coming through of your, your different spheres, nice signal to noise background and, and, and reduction in noise really from that. The other thing that I think is really important about your timing resolution is, is knowing what its consistency is above uh, around different activity ranges. So for normal clinical imaging, most of the time, we might be sitting at around this range here, but in terms of having the capability to do some dynamic work with some um, very short half-life um, traces, then you might end up for a short time creeping up into the, the higher activity ranges as you do that initial bolus through. So it's really good to know that your system is going to cope with that sort of activity range. And the next part of things I just wanted to talk about is combining those two last elements. So combining the 106 centimetre axial field of view and the timing resolution. And that's really those two things combined is what gives you the biggest sensitivity gain of the system. And to explain that probably better than I'll be able to verbally is I've got a lovely graph here. And you can see here on the uh, left hand side, you've got um, on this axis here, the injected dose in millicuries. Um, over here on the right hand side, you've got that um, looking at estimated dose to the patient in terms of millisieverts, which is going to be important for um, different aspects like ethics applications and things like that, I suppose. Um, and then down the bottom here, you've got the estimated duration in minutes. So here's the Biographision Quadra. This is um, a real scanner uh, that's common in the marketplace now, one of ours, and this is another one that um, is still active in the market as well. So if we were to scan, say, this is what this, this graph is telling us, if we were to scan with a relatively normal dose um, on scanner B, active in the market now, we would probably be imaging at about sort of like that 10 minute range. Using a quadra, if we're scanning with the same dose, we could scan so much faster. So what we will probably see is people reducing the doses down with the quadra and scanning at a slightly extended than what's possible, but still much, much quicker than a standard field of view system. And just as a, um, a clinical image example of that, this is um, an FDG case that was done at um, a University Hospital in Bern. And, and this is actually at 140 minute uptake time. So by the time this patient got onto the bed, they had already gone through one and a half half-lives. So there's really quite um, short inactivity there by the time they got onto the bed. 10-minute um, acquisition was what was uh, acquired and it was in list mode, so we could cut it down into different acquisition styles. And you can see the four-minute acquisition is still absolutely beautiful. Um, the two-minute acquisition is perfectly acceptable. And if you needed to do the one-minute acquisition for some reason, then you're still going to definitely get everything there that you, you're looking for. Um, I just wanted to bring that back into the research um, possibilities realm now. So the um, combination of the 106 centimetre axial field of view and the time of flight performance, um, just looking at what's possible, just some of the concepts of what's possible in terms of research, research applications are just thrown onto this slide here. And you can see the top half of the slide is looking at high sensitivity possibilities. Um, and the bottom half of the slide is looking at what's possible due to the multi-organ coverage or the 106 centimetres. Um, and by no means this is all. Um, Steve covered some others in there, but um, some of the things that 
I find interesting is this immunopet. So looking at um, longer leaf traces and, and being able to, um, to do imaging at extended um, uh, delays um, is more feasible with this system with a higher sensitivity. Um, the parametric imaging Steve also mentioned and the multi-organ um, tracer kinetics. I think they're, they're really, really exciting things um, coming forward with the system. So I'll just finish up with a nice look down the bore of the, the Biographision Quadra. So this is just before the covers and everything go on um, as they're, they're pulling the last bits together. Um, thank you very much for um, the opportunity to speak today.